everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what kind of equipment I'm using. So I thought it would be a really good idea to make a video sharing with you all the music equipment I use when I'm traveling. Let's talk audio. To record my audio, I brought my Shure MV88. Again, theme from this video, light and easy to travel with. Check out the size of this microphone case. It, it's super small, so it'll easily kind of fit anywhere. I can even fit it in my trombone case if I need to. If you're curious about how this Shure MV88 mic sounds on the trombone, I have some videos here on my channel that were recorded only using the Shure MV88. Some notable ones I can think of are Imagine. My preferred method of recording with the Shure MV88 is into an iPad. So I did bring my iPad with me. I have an old iPad, so the case is kind of falling apart, but it still does the trick. Now the iPad doubles as also a recording device and also I can use it to read music both on the gig and to pull up some of my books and stuff for practice sessions or lessons. If you're curious about my process for how I record using the Shure MV88 and an iPad, I have a whole video where I outline the whole thing in more detail, so you can go check it out. And for editing my audio, I do that over on my MacBook. Got my MacBook here. And then I use GarageBand over on my MacBook to do my editing. So yeah, I will record into GarageBand on my iPad and then I'm easily able to send it over to my computer for editing. Now this little guy, I am super excited about. This is brand new. I bought it just for this trip. Again, this theme of lightweight and small. So this is a Korg Nano Key 2. It's a little tiny miniature MIDI keyboard and you can see how small it is. So really small, it's really thin, and it comes with a cord here, and USB goes right into your computer. So you can kind of see for size what it looks like right next to your computer. It's just really easy to use. I use this in GarageBand when I am mixing and creating tracks. So for instance, I will use a MIDI keyboard if I'm making an audio track like I did in my Somewhere Over the Rainbow video. <laughs> if I'm making a drum track like I did in Africa. So yeah, this is my on the go little travel MIDI keyboard. Next up, let's talk headphones. So I brought with me my Shure in-ears. And these are great for using for monitoring on stage. And also I like to use them for recording. If you're noticing another theme, I love Shure products. I have a few Shure microphones and I really like their headphones as well. And more for everyday use, I have my new AirPods. I'm definitely an Apple girl, iPhone, iPad, MacBook, AirPods. I also brought with me my custom made earplugs that I have from West Tone. These ones were made specially for me. I had them fitted and everything by an audiologist. I definitely love having earplugs handy. I usually keep them in my case. Two things I love using the earplugs for are rehearsals. Sometimes if you're in a tiny rehearsal space, you have the drum set going, or if you're right by the drums, everything's right in your ear, guitars are blaring, it gets super loud. So I really like to protect my hearing with these. Other things I've used earplugs for in the past, if I don't have in-ear monitors during a show and the monitors are elsewhere or external, sometimes I will play with my earplugs in just because if it gets super loud, it's kind of hard to hear. And I like to be able to hear myself when I'm playing. It just helps me not overblow and kind of focus on what I'm doing. Also, it protects your ears. So yeah, this is what these little guys look like. I got purple. Like I said, it was a custom so I could choose my color and they were made just for me. 
Moving on to video recording. So I record all of my videos on my iPhone. I would show it to you, but I can't because I'm recording on it right now. So yeah, I will use my iPhone for all my videos. Next up are the things that I put my iPhone on to record. So I brought two camera tripods with me. The first one is this, it's so cute and tiny. And I don't know the brand name of this, but I can tell you I did get it at the Don Quixote store in Japan. If you've ever been to Don Quixote, you know what the vibe is. <laughs> so yeah, and it only costs 500 yen, which is equivalent to like less than five US dollars. So it's super cheap. This thing is awesome. I'm sure you can find some similar ones online on Amazon, but yeah, super cheap. This thing is awesome. Your phone fits right in here. And then these legs, you can use them as a tripod stand or here's the best part. They can kind of curve around stuff. So I've used this before when I was recording like a live stream from a gig these little arms can easily attach to a pole or a mic stand or kind of anything nearby and you can just kind of attach this anywhere to film. So this is really useful. The other tripod I have is kind of your more typical camera tripod, iPhone tripod. It's from Zome and this one I have is really a good value for your money. However, I do think if you have more money to spend, you can certainly get something a little more durable and kind of more heavy duty, but this one is super lightweight. It's made from plastic and it folds down really well, really tiny. So I could easily fit it in a backpack or a bag or anything like that. After I have my video filmed, it's back to the MacBook, which I use for my video editing. And to edit my videos, I use Final Cut Pro 10. Now this is something I don't think I've mentioned before, but to edit videos, I always edit on an external hard drive. This is a WD Elements. This is a four terabyte hard drive. So that, that's pretty big, but if you're gonna be doing video editing, a lot of times a laptop just won't cut it. The file sizes can get like really large, really fast, especially if you're recording a lot of content and you have a lot of videos. So yeah, I definitely always use this for video editing. And this just reminds me one more little thing. Obviously, if you're a Mac person, you're gonna need a dongle. Um, this little adapter to plug really anything USB related into your MacBook. So I will also use this with my little Korg Nano Key MIDI keyboard. Last but not least, let's talk about lighting. So you might've seen in some of my videos at home in my studio setup, I have a green screen and studio lights. Obviously I wasn't gonna pack that and bring it with me. So for the remainder of this trip, it's just gonna be all natural, baby. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using natural lighting to film my videos. Actually, I think natural lighting looks the best. It just can be kind of hard to manipulate. Obviously you're dealing with the sun, which can be temperamental. But in Dubai, there's no shortage of sunshine, so it should be fine. My tips for using natural light to record is you wanna place your device right in front of a window and film looking into the window. So you don't want the window behind you and you're gonna be backlit, that's not gonna look good. So yeah, just make sure all that natural light is shining right on your face and it should look really good. Make sure it's either a sunny day or a cloudy day. You definitely don't want a day where it's like partly cloudy and the sun is peeking in and out because that's gonna affect the lighting of your video. It's gonna change throughout the video if the sun goes behind a cloud or something. One more tip about using natural lighting, if you're gonna film outside, there's this thing that photographers and videographers call golden hour. And what that is, is where the lighting is just perfect outside. Usually this happens two times a day. It happens at around sunset and sunrise. So I know it can be kind of inconvenient to wake up super early to film videos, but trust me, it's worth it with the way it looks. Or if it's cloudy, like it is in Seattle, you can kind of film at any time during the day. Things you want to avoid are filming in the middle of the day where the sun's kind of beating right down on you. It just doesn't look the best. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I can answer some of your questions about the equipment that I use when I'm traveling. This is gonna be my portable setup for the next few months. If you have any questions about anything, please leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much to my Patreon donors. You make all of my videos possible, especially thank you for this little guy, this new gadget that I bought. If you wanna show your support and join us over on Patreon, you can visit patreon.com slash Lisa If you like this video, please show me that you like it by liking it. You can also subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. If you want more updates throughout the week, please follow me on Instagram at Lisa Liz Trombone. I'll be posting on my story and just posting more often over there so you can kind of see what I'm up to. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye.